Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, episode 249. I'm your host, Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. I'm your host for this show, and you can probably tell I'm driving. We'll see how well it happens on the back end, the cleaning up of all this audio, thanks to the wonderful team that handles all of that back end stuff and allows me to focus on other things like Today, as I'm driving from HQ in Vermont to Maine for an event, it's the finale of the Maine Martial Arts Circuit, it's their championship event, and they're really friendly to us, so they said, hey, come set up a table, and, you know, a couple tables, it's going to be a bunch of tables, and maybe some folks can get some, some last-minute Christmas gifts. Of course, you might be listening to this in the future, it may not be approaching Christmas time when you're listening. Whenever you're listening, wherever you are listening from, I thank you. I thank you for your time. And thank you for supporting Whistlekick. If you want to check out the stuff that we make, you can go to whistlekick.com. If you want to check out the other episodes that we've done, those are at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Today, I want to talk about the show, this show. Why we do some of the things that we do and why we give a platform to, I don't want to say anyone, but almost everyone. That doesn't mean that we can accept every guest on the show. We've grown to the point where we have a lot of people that want to come on the show, which is awesome. Makes my life easier. But not everyone gets the nod because we only release 52 interview episodes in a year. And we've got to hold those slots for the guests that are going to be the most compelling and interesting to you, the listeners, our audience. There's a responsibility to all of you that we bring you the best people we can. The impetus for this episode is a comment that was left on a recent podcast episode that I deleted, that will never see the light of day because it was so horrible, so insulting to me, to Whistlekick, to the guest, that I wasn't even gonna let it out there to respond. Those of you that know me or follow what we do, that's not generally my style. I like to keep things open and public. And if there's discourse to be had, I want it to be had publicly because we can all stand to benefit from that. But in this case, this person who wrote in was very much um, not a fan of the guests that we featured. Now you might be able to speculate as to who that was. Over the years, we've had a number of guests who are controversial in various ways, either for the stories that they told, the opinions that they held, or just who they are and and what they represent within the martial arts. We've had folks that others will look at and say, they don't deserve their rank, or that person is flat out a liar about the things that they're saying happened. My job as the host of this show is not to judge. It doesn't mean that we're completely objective. It doesn't mean that we're never going to take an opinion. Certainly, I'm a person, I'm a human being, I have opinions. But when I speak with someone on the show, my goal is not to layer my opinions on top of what they say. My goal is to bring as much information to light as I can, kind of like a journalist, so you can make the decision for yourself. You have your own set of opinions and ideas and your own martial arts training and books you've read and whatever else. And how you feel the opinions that you hold are a factor of all of those things. I am not trying to build an audience full of people who think exactly like I do. I don't want that. In fact, I have had discussion, intelligent discussion, sometimes passionate discussion on and off the air, sometimes on social media, with not only people who listen to the show, but people who became or were guests of the show. It's no secret that I've built friendships from talking to people on the show, and I love that. But this person stepped over the line, and I want to explain how they did. The first thing was they started off by insulting me. 
they called me a, um, we don't swear on the show, a kiss butt, paraphrasing a little bit, you know what I mean, for even giving this person the opportunity to come on the show. Well, first off, they're passing a judgment there. You can imagine the most controversial, negative figure in the martial arts, whoever that is to you. You can imagine the most offensive, insulting person in the martial arts. If they have some things that they want to say, and those things warrant hearing by enough of the audience that I think it would be interesting and people will listen, I'm going to bring them on the show. That's just, that's just how it is. So right away, this person passed judgment that this person, this guest, didn't deserve the airtime. Secondly, the commenter continued on to offensively critique the stories that this guest told, their history, their lineage, pretty much everything that they said on the show. And it was really apparent that the comments this individual was making had almost nothing, possibly nothing at all to do with what the guest said on the show. It was entirely based on things that the guest had said or done or written or whatever prior. Right there to me, that's a flag. This listener wasn't, and honestly, I don't even know if they listened. For all I know, they saw the guest's name and lost their mind. They just went off. They were responding not to the episode, but to the person. And that's the difference. We're going to give people the opportunity to speak, to present who they are, their stories. And sometimes those stories aren't gonna be true. Hopefully, the majority of the time they will be. But the goal here is to get you to think and to entertain. If you listen to something and you completely disagree, but if it's made you think, that's part of what I see as my job. I hope that the guests that we bring you are entertaining and educational, whether that education comes from what the guest says or what you listen to and form your own opinions to be in contrast to the guest's words. Honestly, I don't care which one it is. So to the listeners out there, thank you. The majority of you are incredibly respectful. And in fact, on this very same episode I'm referencing, we had a ton, far more than average feedback, positive feedback. People really enjoyed this episode. They found the guest a dynamic storyteller who was exciting and entertaining and, and they just loved it. And to that one person whose comment I deleted, I wrote you an email. And I explained in a shorter, obviously, text version everything I'm saying here. If you look around, if you look on YouTube, if you look at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, at the show notes and the comments below, you'll see that there are critical comments. I have no problem letting those stand but it has to be constructive and it has to be respectful. Actually, I even take back the constructive part. It has to be respectful. You can have respect for someone that you disagree with. You can have respect for someone who hasn't been respectful to you. We've talked about that on this show. And I think that that's important. It is important that we as martial artists conduct ourselves in a way that makes the rest of the world see martial arts as something to aspire to. And part of that is rising above and being respectful even when you don't see the value in it. If you want to be on the show, or even better, if you know someone that belongs on the show, someone whose story we should chronicle, reach out. There's a form at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com or you can email me directly, jeremy at whistlekick.com. One of the things I'm really proud of is that we're building this archive 
of tremendous stories of folks who are aging, who are passing away. I don't know that I spoke of it on, no, I, I have mentioned it. We have had, unfortunately, our first guest pass away, Hanchi Jim Smith, all the way back to episode 16, 18. He was definitely in, in the teens. A really kind man. And after he passed, we had a number of students reach out and say thank you for that episode. People that had never listened to it, people that wanted to listen to it again. Because now there's something, not that there aren't a multitude of other elements to his legacy, but sort of a condensed Cliff Notes version of who he was towards the end of his life. And I wanna do that for others. So if you know someone whose story deserves to be chronicled, or if there's a topic that deserves that same treatment, reach out. Because it's the more important element of what we're doing here. I love that what we do is entertaining and educational, but these interviews that we do, they're important at least to me, and maybe not to all of you, but I know for some of you because I get that feedback. So let's flesh out the list of people. And these people don't have to be people that everyone knows of. If you take a look at the list, most of them aren't. They're people that have lived their lives as martial artists, who have advanced the arts, and have made the lives of those around them better because of the martial arts and through I thank you for listening today. That's all I've got to say. Hope to hear from some of you so we can set out some amazing interviews with the people that you hold dear. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day. Mm-hmm.